Thank you for joining me this morning. I appreciate it. I hope this will spark a broader discussion here in Congress about poverty in the LGBT community. As, as a result of recent progress, there is a common misconception in this country that individuals who identify as LGBT tend to be well off, have political power, and all this despite the fact. That's why I wanted the first Equality Caucus briefing of the 114th Congress to address the economics of equality. <coughs> uh, from a personal point of view, I have to plead guilty as well. This was not an issue or a topic I understood at all. And Stan Sloan and Todd Hamilton, known from my uh, office, uh, sat down with me and began to talk about these issues. So I understand that uh, HIV AIDS, for example, is, an, is a disease uh, often of poverty. This country needs to begin to talk about that issue and all the other issues that relate to poverty in any community since the, day, the first day of that discussion. There has been remarkable moments of progress for the LGBT community in the past few years. The repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell eliminated systematic discrimination against individuals serving in our military. Same-sex marriage is now legal in 37 states in the District of Columbia. And there's a good chance that later this year, the Supreme Court will finally rule in favor of marriage equality throughout the country. However, these victories stand in sharp, stark contrast to the economics of equality that our panelists will address today. The facts show that poverty and income inequality disproportionately impact the LGBT community in our country. People who identify mm -hmm. as LGBT experience a number of economic disparities compared to different sex couples and non-LGBT people. An estimated 1.6 million youth experience homelessness in the U.S. every year, but 40% of these young people are believed to identify as LGBT. According to the National Transgender Discrimination Survey, a transgender person is four times as likely to have a household income under $10,000 and twice as likely to be unemployed as other Americans. Approximately 2.4 million LGBT adults, or 29%, have experienced a time in the last year when they did not have enough money to feed themselves or their family. A 2013 Pew survey found that 21% of the LGBT respondents have, treated, have been treated unfairly by an employer in hiring, pay, or promotions. Up to 41% of gay and transgender workers were verbally or physically abused at work or had their workplace vandalized. The rate of substance abuse disorders among LRGBT individuals may be between 20 and 30 percent, significant, significantly higher than the general population at 9 percent. This morning we will hear from experts who have joined together to address this crucial issue by forming the LGBT Poverty Collaborative. First, I'd like to introduce our moderator, Urvashi Vet Bod, who is the director of Engaging Tradition Project at the Center for Gender and Sexuality Law at Columbia University. That's as tough an introduction as I had to do. <laughs> Each of these folks sitting before you are playing a crucial role in addressing the economics of equality. I look forward to beginning the conversation with them and how to address this pressing issue. Thank you and enjoy this conference.